In Death Valley National Park, Devil's Hole is a tiny spot of water in an otherwise desolate and inhospitable environment. It is home to the only population of the Devil's Hole pupfish, which live in the top few feet of this pool of water. They are rarely found more than two to three feet from the surface. The pupfish are critically endangered. The fish were named for their habit of frolicking like puppies, and they are thought to be the rarest fish on Earth. After the discovery of the fish, the cave and surrounding area were added to the Death Valley National Monument by President Harry Truman in 1952. Nobody knows precisely how deep Devil's Hole is. On its surface, a gap in the rock the size of a living room drops down 30 feet to a limestone shelf and hot water pool. The temperature of the water at the geothermal pool remains about 92 degrees year-round. Below, a series of tunnels lead to numerous caverns. Below the surface pool, Devil's Hole descends approximately 160 feet through what is termed the main chamber, before reaching a narrow opening referred to as the funnel. Through the opening lies a much larger chamber of the cavern system, known as Acre's Chasm. Immediately after passing the funnel into Acre's Chasm, a narrow side tube can be found to a diver's left. The side tube proceeds approximately 90 feet upward to a chamber with an air pocket, named Brown's Room. The tube leading to Brown's Room has at least two offshoots, the higher of which leads to a dead end filled with the small air pocket, and the lower of which joins with additional tubes descending from Brown's Room. Acre's Chasm is approximately 300 feet in length, 40 feet in width, and has a bottom approximately 260 feet below the surface. The bottom portion of the floor descends below the lower shelf. A gradual funnel leads to a hole in the bottom of the chamber, featuring a strong current. The hole is 315 feet below the surface and just large enough for a diver with equipment to fit through. Tethered weights go to at least 485 feet deep in Devil's Hole. Cables have been dropped over 900 feet by divers already at the bottom of Acre's Chasm, without touching bottom. But the deeper portion of the hole has a current, so it is unclear if the line was bowed. The hole seems to be endless. Several adventurers have tried to find the deepest contours of Devil's Hole. The farthest steps were seen in 1991 by USGS explorers who descended 436 feet. One reason that the hole is thought to descend much farther into the Earth than other caves is the strange effect distant seismic activity has on the surface water. Cameras set up at the hole captured a tiny tsunami in the pond, in which the water sucked into the cave before surging up four feet. An earthquake of a 7.4 magnitude in Mexico, some 2,000 miles away, caused the phenomenon. The magnification of distant rumblings implies the water may somehow connect with the deep movement of tectonic plates. Multiple similar events of rising water in the cave after earthquakes have been recorded since then. One diver, Jim Houts, dove into the hole dozens of times in the early 1960s. He described it as beautiful. The rocky walls of the hole are brightly colored, every color of the rainbow. It goes straight down to 160 feet, like a pipe, then opens into a room, Jim said. It was Jim's description of the strangeness that lurked below in Devil's Hole that may have inspired the group of four young men who set off on June 20th, 1965 to explore the natural phenomenon. On that night, the four young men David, age 20, Paul, 19, Bill, 19, and Jack, 20, headed out to the spot 90 miles northwest of Las Vegas. They were armed with amateur diving gear and a whole lot of courage. They jumped the fence around Devil's Hole and got in. One of the young men was reportedly a senator's son. Three of them, Paul, David, and Bill, dove into the water without wetsuits and with rudimentary air tanks. 
on their backs. Bill's brother Jack stayed on the shelf as a lookout. Shortly into the dive at an unknown depth, Bill noticed his oxygen supply was already running low. Upon realizing this, all three divers headed back up. Paul never surfaced. Bill and David then frantically dove again to find their friend. When Bill came up for the second time, he realized he was now the only diver to surface. Now both Paul and David were gone. He got ahead of me and I lost him, Bill told reporters. I went to a depth of 175 feet and couldn't find him. The surviving brothers drove through the night back to Las Vegas to get help. Rangers and a sheriff's search and rescue team got to the hole in the early hours, telling reporters there was a slim chance the missing boys may be sustained by air pockets in the hole. It is possible the young men started suffering from nitrogen narcosis, which happens when you dive incredibly deep. It causes a drunken state, and you get lightheaded. A diver loses the ability to think logically and may make dangerous decisions, like taking off their mask. Jim Houts described that it makes you feel like there's nothing you can't do. Jim was at the Newport Harbor Yacht Club giving a presentation on diving when a call came in from the federal government. They asked him if there were any air pockets in the caves. Jim said, yeah. Jim was then transported via plane to the cave with his team of divers. The divers went in in increments. Jim made it down to the lower chamber, where he found a mask with a snorkel on it and a fin. Then he found another item from the other diver. Jim was able to keep his mind together, even at depth, because he had been training for it. Jim went to the surface and notified everybody about what was found. He later described it as a sad and solemn moment. He went back to recover the rest of the equipment. He made a dive to 325 feet and found the remainder of some of the gear. The victims likely wound up beyond in the very far depths because they were never found. Jim said, once you round that first bend at 90 feet, you don't know what dark is until you go around that bend. The two missing young men had recently become brothers-in-law. Paul's 20-year-old sister, Paula, had married David two months earlier. Newspapers reported that she wept at the cave entrance as the search and rescue team worked but failed to find her brother or husband. Paula, her mom, and Bill hugged as they were told that the search was over. Over the years, security has increased around the hole to both protect people from the hole and the pupfish from people. This included the installation of a tall fence and cameras. But it hasn't always stopped sometimes drunk trespassers from invading the pupfish's home. In 2016, three men camped out at the nearby town of Crystal, drank rum, and chased rabbits around the desert with shotguns. At the time, a 10-foot fence protected Devil's Hole. In an intoxicated, mischief-filled adventure, one the men barely remembered when arrested days later, they shot out the surveillance camera, scaled the fence, and stripped naked. Footage from the scene reportedly showed one man vomiting on a boulder as another lowered himself into the pool. One of the men, whose underwear was found in the pool the following morning, alongside a dead pupfish, served a year in prison for charges that included a violation of the Endangered Species Act. 